This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I've got my co-host Robbie Hull back with me. Welcome back, Robbie. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Always a pleasure. Who is your special guest today? Aaron. Aaron, we have Constable, yeah, Constable Aaron Tompkins from the Smith Falls Police Department. Our Good morning, service Aaron, officer. and thank you for joining us. Well, as always, uh, Robbie and Kathy, I'm uh, I'm so happy to be here and uh, get put on the hot speed by uh, Mr. Hull again. So, can can you tell me about please me? Sure. So we uh, do this every year and it's uh, across the province. And what we'd like to do is showcase um, just our, our great efforts and contributions to the communities all across the province by our uh, police uh, men and women uh, all across the province. And we have some amazing staff that uh, are here local in our community and are very active, as you know, different community events, um, you name it, uh, we have a lot of officers that have been here a long time and uh, I mean, we love going out and doing stuff in the community and being visible in our community is uh, very important to our police service as well. So uh, whether it be foot patrol, downtown core, um, bicycle patrols, beautiful week this week. So we've had officers, uh, myself included, going out tomorrow um, and we'll be hitting, uh, hitting the bike paths and roadways on our bicycles. So. Always a great time, but um, the biggest thing is we just want to uh, showcase um, the positive side of policing and how actually uh, we, we do make big differences in communities. It's not just uh, giving out speeding tickets all the time or uh, handing out tickets or arresting people. We do, uh, that's only a small part of our job. And why is it so important? Important. Sorry, what's that? Why is it so important? So again, the, the importance is really we just uh, we do want to showcase the hard work that all of our officers do, and uh, we got some great events lined up, and uh, we we just don't do a week. So we go even further than that. We uh, we go before, during, and after police week because we want to make sure uh, we should call it police month, really, in Smith Falls here. So, what activities will be taking place? Yeah, so we uh, mixing it up a little bit this year. So um, we did the Special Olympics barbecue, uh, an appreciation barbecue for. Uh, special uh, Olympians plus their guardians and helpers and uh, we had a good turnout of our staff. Uh, we had over 10 of our staff out which was amazing. Um, Chief on barbecue did a great job cooking for everyone and uh, so that was uh, that was kind of our kickoff and uh, the reason we, we bumped you guys up to May was because we didn't get to do the Christmas party with you and uh, normally we would do the barbecue uh, for the Special Olympians in uh, October or September, late up, late September. But we said, you know what, you guys will kick off. So this, you guys were our first kickoff for our Police Week activities. Um, have some presentations lined up. So uh, today, Thursday, some next week lined up for uh, some senior fraud prevention and safety awareness. So that's uh, another thing uh, we, we definitely wanted to touch on because right now the scams and the calls are increasing. We've noticed an increase, so I can only imagine the public is uh, tenfold uh, much worse than we are as far as getting those scam calls. Uh, what else are we doing? We're gonna try and uh, get out to all the elementary schools and uh, I'm just gonna have some of our officers join me. We'll, we'll hit the, uh, the elementary lower age uh, grades and uh, they can come outside and check out police cruisers and ask a lot of questions and uh, just do that interacting more of a one-on-one. -on -one. And finally, I'm uh, just in the final steps um, of arranging. So it's coffee with a cop. So we're going to uh, partner up um, with one of the local coffee shops here and just have it as an open house, informal chat, just come in and uh, ask us some questions and uh, just interact with us that way. So 
those are just a few of the things. I'm sure there's a, a few in there that I have forgotten. However, uh, those are the main ones that I can think of off the top of my head. Well, on the events uh, coming up, yeah, and so down the, the road. Yeah, so the month of May is is very busy, and every day or every second day there seems to be a new um, week or program. Like May is like the worst or the busiest month out of the whole year, it seems. Everything's jammed into that one month. So um, part of it, obviously, we have Police Week. Um, nursing Week is also this week right now happening. Uh, we had First Responders Day, the beginning of May. We had Firefighters Day. Um, so we celebrate all those. Those are all our, our community partners that uh, obviously we uh, we do work with day in day out, and uh, they're frontline just like we are. So they've they've been through the the trenches, if you would, during the COVID the past two years. So uh, happy to celebrate those dates. Um, coming up into the long weekend, which is not that far away, we focus on some safety around um, the waterways because. May long weekend, that's when all the waterways open up, the canal systems, and it's just a busy, busy time for boats. We wanna make sure people um, have the education on doing it safely, equipment required, licenses and uh, equipment to make sure everything's safe, as well as we also do roadway or road safety week. Um, I think it's the 17th through the 23rd this year. Again, leading up and through that long weekend, and uh, we'll be doing a lot of enforcement and education uh, on the big four that are um, the most dangerous or causing the most problems on our roadways. That being uh, impaired driving, that could be drugs, alcohol, combination of both. Um, seat belts, people not wearing them or not wearing them properly. So again, you'll see officers out checking that as well as um, cell phones or distracted driving. And the last one, and probably uh, the cell phones or the distracted driving and, and the final one being speed. They're very close on uh, number of accidents, fatalities on the roadways. So again, um, not to say that they're more important, but they're, they're definitely up there. So we'll be out uh, full force and just doing that education enforcement piece. How many years has a coach run at the coach one and two have been operating. So this year is a big year for uh, for the torch run. It's uh, 35 years, um, celebrating 35 years. So I think it was, uh, I can't do the math right now, but uh, it's definitely uh, 35 years that um, we're celebrating. And uh, we have some great, uh, great stuff rolling up to it, so. What are the dates and locations for the one and four tour? Sure, so we're gonna uh, kick it off um, on June 3rd, so that's a Friday. And that's gonna be our tolling, and that's always held at the Cornelius Street underpass. And uh, you won't miss us. We're gonna have um, those two middle lanes blocked off like we normally would. And uh, we're usually out in very bright colors, have music playing. Um, the only thing is we do ask, uh, we we'll, should run that from about 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. is just to slow down. If for some reason you can't make a donation or, or feel that you, you don't want to make a donation, we just have you slow down. Um, just give us a wave. That's all we need. But uh, because we do have a lot of athletes out, plus volunteers from the community, uh, and myself included, uh, we want to make sure it's safe for everybody. So that's Friday, June 3rd. That's at the Cornelius Street underpass here in Smith Falls. Um, June 4th is our actual torch run event. And that's going to be held, uh, we're going to form up around 9 a.m. at the Settlers Ridge Mall. And uh, we will progress with the torch run. We're going to go, it's a little bit different uh, route this year because of the constructions, but... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting, Robbie. So we're going to go all the way up Brockville, all the way up Beckwith. And I think we're going to go to as close as we can go. So maybe Russell Street. And we'll just do that little detour around. And then we'll continue up Elmsley and finish off at the back of the mall. So I believe that's the the uh, either approved or proposed approved route. 
Um, but that to me makes the most sense. And that way we're still uh, going through the downtown core and having some fun. And again, on that date, uh, we'll be collecting funds. Any Anything is appreciated. And um, just make sure that uh, you pull over to the sides because again, you'll see us, you, you won't miss us. And uh, just give us a wave, give us a honk of the horn. We love that. And uh, hopefully we get a nice day for it. How, how on the fun, fun ways from this event used for? Yeah, so basically every, every cent that's donated goes right back into programming for um, special, special Olympian athletes all across the province. So local athletes, as you know, we do uh, swimming, bowling, bocce ball, um, probably a few others I'm forgetting in there. Those are the, the big ones that I recall. Um, so there are expenses obviously to have um, people participate in these events. And that's just on your, your weekly activities, but then you have your, your special events where you're, you're going and competing um, for swimming and, and bowling. Um, and there's a lot of costs associated with that transportation, meals, lodging, uh, entry fees, you name it. There's, there's so much cost associated. So that's, that's the bulk of it. That's where this is going to pro program money and donations would, uh, would support these. Um, going to hockey games just as a, a fun night out or special events, um, Christmas parties, you name it. So uh, just know that if you donate, the money's going to go back in uh, right where it needs to go. So, Well, is the golf tournament being held and on what day? All right. It is going to be on Wednesday, June the 8th. And that's at the Smith Falls Golf and Country Club. I'm just looking to get the proper names. Um, and what we do, we have a poster made up here. So maybe I'll send it over to Kathy and we can get that put on if you don't have it already, but uh, I'll just hold that up. So we, those are our fancy posters and uh, we've designed them for businesses. So they're actually both um, two-sided. So the same information. So if you're in the store or out of the store, you're gonna see those. So we'll be out uh, handing those out and uh, looking for some of that local business support, which has always been very generous in our community. <clears throat> so yeah, so it's Wednesday, June 8th, start, it's a shotgun start, it's from one o'clock. And uh, they have here listed as a format, it's a four or six um, man, or we'll say team, scramble teams. Uh, entry fee is $125 per person, and that's for non-members of the golf club. And that also includes um, a nice golf cart and a nice meal. And the meal is very good. I can attest to that. If you are a member of the Smith Falls uh, Golf and Country Club, it reduces a little bit to $100. And again, you still get your cart and that nice meal. And then you stay for the fun afterwards. That's uh, That to me is just as fun as the golf. So the, uh, the prizes and all that wonderful stuff. And the meal is uh, is my big thing. And there's also going to be a putting contest, silent auction, live auctions, you name it. Um, and it should mention here, so the local chapter of our special Olympians um, for swimming, bocce ball, and bowling, we had uh, 43 participants locally. So that's pretty amazing. And uh, that number seems to, to keep going up because I see some new faces uh, out of the barbecue. We had a few new faces that I hadn't seen. So nice to meet them and uh, welcome them to our, our local chapter of uh, Special Olympians. What, what can people and businesses do if they want to get involved? For sure. So right here on the poster, um, there's, there's contacts for uh, a few people. So Beep, so he's a member of the Kinsman Club. So we do uh, the fundraising and the, the golf tournament uh, in joint with them. So the Kinsman Smith Falls Police Association. So we're kind of a, a joint team. And um, so you can contact uh, Beep and his contact. And I'll, I'll make sure you have this poster. And then with the local businesses, we um, hand out some sheets saying if you would like to be 
a whole sponsor. Um, there's a cost associated to that. So $100 and then you get your name um, on a whole, so your business name. Um, we just do strict donations or people want to donate prizes for the, uh, the auctions or the silent auctions, live auctions. So you name it, um, those forms will be handed out. But if for some reason a member from our um, committee doesn't reach out to you, by all means, uh, BP English is going to be your contact and uh, you can go from there. What, what cause are uh, involved in playing the tournament? Well, we went over the, uh, the costs, the, say the pre-registration or the registration costs. Um, so that's that 125 or $100. And then any extra costs would be um, money for the, the prizes. There's going to be probably a 50-50 draw as well. Um, silent auctions, those live auctions. Um, I'm sure they'll be able to, uh, to accommodate debit or credit cards. I know, uh, or there'd be bank machine on site, but, uh, no additional hidden costs other than, uh, just pay for your, your green fees or your registration. And that gets you in for the whole day and it is a whole day. So, um, starting at one o'clock, we suggest you be there probably half an hour early register or check in and, uh, get your cards assigned. And one o'clock, we're we're starting. So, is is that anything else you would like to add? Um, not a whole lot else, other than uh, during police week. I mean, if you see an officer out walking downtown or uh, out in the parks, by all means, we're we're very approachable. Uh, we want people to feel comfortable coming up, saying hi. Uh, I love going down to the park, especially in the summertime when we have all the tours. Um, I make up about five different answers about where the falls are in Smith Falls, because uh, as we know, there's no big waterfalls, but everybody asks. Um, so I usually give them about five different versions, and then I actually tell them the truth at the end, and uh, that's pretty fun. But um, that's the biggest thing. Just uh, say hi, give us a wave. That's what we're there for. Uh, we're members of the community. We work here, we play here, we live in the community. So uh, just want to say thanks uh, for having us and uh, glad to be part of this uh, larger group in, uh, in our community here. Thank you for joining us, Aaron. And we are looking forward to these upcoming events. Yeah, me too. And uh, we haven't done it since 2019. So it seems like, I don't know, it's only three or two years ago, but it seems like it was forever ago that we actually got to go out and have some fun because um, it is a blast, whether it be the tolling, the torch run. And I forgot to mention uh, Canyon Tire on the Saturday after our torch run graciously uh, has let us come back and uh, we're going to do some additional tolling at the entrance exits um, or exits for the stores. And uh, we're going to be setting up a little um, a tent to sell some of the, the merchandise to support Special Olympics as well. So big shout out to uh, more money. That's right. That's right. So <laughs> that uh, new owner there is very, very uh, friendly and uh, says, no, you're more than welcome to come in. So we're very happy for that support as well. Well, this has been great, Aaron. If I could ask one thing before we wrap up, too. I know the, the weather's really nice outside. You're seeing bicycles going uh, and children on their bikes. Can you just uh, say a few words uh, regarding the safety on bicycles? No, definitely. And thanks for bringing that up because we're we're getting like it's like a light switch today. They uh, they turned summer on finally. It was cold, and then now it's plus 25, 29 tomorrow or something. So definitely. So what um, we always suggest to parents is. Have a look at your kid's uh, or child's bicycle. Make sure the brakes are working, the chain's working. Everything's functioning as proper. Um, if you're going to be out past dark or early morning um, and the sun isn't up, there's requirements. You need a, a white light at the front and a red light at the rear. Um, if you're under the age of 18, you need to wear a bicycle helmet at all times, uh, on the roadways at least. And um, just be safe. If you're actually um, driving on the roadways, you need to know the, the rules of the road, the uh, the proper arm signals. So there's only three of them. So a left turn, you just stick your left arm out. If you're doing a right turn, um, you put your right, or sorry, your left arm up like that. And then if you're stopping, same thing with your left arm, you're just aiming it down. So 
Um, those basic three rules of the road. Um, otherwise, if you are sharing the sidewalk, let's say if you're a smaller child, um, just be mindful that there's other people, walking dogs, just walking, um, the little motorized scooters or wheelchairs, just got to be mindful that they also are going to be out on the walkways or uh, on the shared path. So. Excellent, excellent. Now, I, I just uh, I thought of one more thing uh, we can talk about shortly, uh, Aaron. Uh, an incident happened here in Smith Falls that t typically I don't remember ever living in Smith Falls and having it happen, but there was a moose at Walmart. <laughs> oh, yeah, the moose on the loose. Uh, Elliot was his name. Did you see that, Robbie? Yeah. We, yeah. We were running to Walmart to grab a new game, and he was still there. He was still there. He was there a long time, and he came back after um, a couple days. So that was interesting. And no, um, I've been here over 18 years, and I've never seen a moose on the loose. Uh, he liked Walmart for whatever reason. Maybe it was uh, nice and quiet back there. But um, we were happy to say that with partnership with the, uh, the Ministry of Natural Resources, they were able to come out and safely uh, remove Elliot, relocate him, hopefully somewhere safer, because um, at the end of it, we don't want anybody to get hurt or um, or Elliot hit by a car or something or run into a business. Oh. That'd be bad or into a pool. You name it, they uh, they do it all because they're wild animals. And uh, just wanted to also say thanks to Walmart staff; they were great as well as the public because um, everybody was curious and wanted to get close to the moose. But obviously, that is not safe. So um, everybody was great to help out and uh, our town public works, I think they came out and set up some barricades. So um, uh, one off and uh, hopefully we don't get too many more Elliot's coming through, but um, I, I read or, a couple of times. Or yeah, no, he was in Perth. It, it's done in Perth. <laughs> yeah, so he's uh, traveling all around that guy, but um, obviously he was uh, relocated as safe as possible and uh, we let the professionals do it, the, the Ministry of Natural Resources, because uh, I don't want to uh, wrestle a moose. No, mm -hmm. for sure, for sure. Not a typical day for our Smith Falls Police Department, for sure, but we we're glad you were there to help out. So, <laughs> thank you very much, Police Constable Aaron Tompkins from our Smith Falls Police Department and my co-host, Robbie Hall. Thank you very much, Robbie.